So next up we have shoes from Undandy. They're another brand that is kind of in this direct-to-consumer type space and they're trying to differentiate themselves by doing really sort of a fully customizable model. You go onto their website and you can build a shoe from scratch. In my case what I did was I was watching a Fred Astaire film from the 1950s uh, called Silk Stockings and in the first few scenes of that film, Astaire is wearing these kind of chocolate brown suede Oxford shoes with a cap toe, and I really like the look of them. So I thought, why not try to kind of construct those for myself? Yeah. So using their online builder, that's the kind of shoe that I built. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool and unheard of in this price range. Mm -hmm. Usually this kind of made to order program is something you see with more expensive brands, these shoes are like $195, so that's under $200 fully customized. I don't think they stock anything. You just go with their builder mm -hmm. and um, it's pretty remarkable from that first, at first glance. I chose a shoe, I designed one um, that I was inspired by. I think I saw the model on their website, they have an extensive mm -hmm. selection. And I like the suede with the calf kind of contrast spectator look, but it wasn't like an extreme color difference. Mm -hmm. So for me, those were kind of summery shoes and I, I went with a kind of unfinished, uncolored sole leather, mm -hmm. which is very different than yours. Right, yeah, absolutely. They have a couple of different last options, a few different styles. So the one I chose, they call it the 31 last. It's sort of more of a, you know, conservative style with a smaller, more rounded yeah. toe. The style is, I mean, it doesn't look like a typical shoe from Lowe or Edward Green or Crockett and Jones. And yeah, I was pretty disappointed by their lasts. They were all either modern. So this was this Undandy 15 last. And it's, it's quite like chiseled in a way. It's extreme with a suede. It kind of toned it down. But I was just surprised that the choices of lasts mm -hmm. were just not very refined in, in my mind. Like if you look at high-end brands like Alfred Sargent or Edward Green, Ralph Lauren, they all have like very kind of nice lines. These are more, I don't know, it looks more like a less expensive shoe, which is pretty easy to change, I think, because it, it doesn't cost any more once you have your design finalized. Right. So I was surprised by that. Yeah, I would agree. I think what I would say ultimately is out of the last options they did have, I chose the one that I thought was the most conservative. Yeah. Uh, the 31 last, as I say, was the roundest. Their next option, the 48, is a little bit longer, a little bit more angular. And then this here, as you've chosen, the 15 last, as you say, is it's very long, very pointy, as you said, kind of chiseled almost. Yeah, the suede is extremely soft and supple. I noticed there were like two blemishes in the leather that they didn't catch, which I'm surprised by because mm. if they make this shoe individually, like, you know, it's not like a mass production thing, they should probably pay a little more attention to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would think that the attention to detail would be a little bit higher if the shoes are made almost individually. Um, I didn't really have any issues with mine, fortunately. I thought the construction was good, that the spacing of the stitching was fairly even. The only thing that I really noticed about these that I was less than thrilled by is that I did uh, one of the, the customizable options that they have is to just add rubber to the bottom of the sole themselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rather than having a cobbler do it. Yeah. But in doing this, the outside of the sole where the, where the rubber was added did tend to kind of shed or flake off a little bit. There were some extra little trimmings that might not have gotten taken off completely. And Got you can it. also see around the stitching on the sole here, there's still little pieces of rubber that have also kind of hung on too. Got it. So it could have cleaned out a little more. Overall, probably not that big of a deal. In no, terms definitely of not. Longevity, it's, it's more like just cleaning up the shoe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got the leather sole because I like leather soles. And I have to say it's all extremely soft. It's like Blake, 
construction. Um, one of the few shoes that doesn't have any weld stitch, mm -hmm. which looks kind of odd. It's a more kind of clean, streamlined, modern design. Um, I got size 44 in the last. And I have to say, it's kind of funny because it's a long last, it's modern, but there's not too much room in the toe box because it's so soft, it, it works. But um, the, the front heel is very soft. The back is a little stronger, mm -hmm. but overall, because the leather is so soft, you can already, after a few times of wear, see those caps, which just doesn't look super flattering. It just looks like a more heavily worn shoe. Right. I think if there was everything a little stiffer, it would look a little better and hold up a little more. Mm -hmm. I mean, the soft sole is certainly comfortable. There's no break-in period, but the heel is a little wide for me. Mm -hmm. So being it a loafer, it, it kind of slips a little bit, but I could not size down to 43 and a half in those because it would be too tight in my toe box. Mm -hmm. So just the, the last design is maybe not ideal, but on this kind of last, I wouldn't have thought this kind of shoe would have looked any good. Mm -hmm. Right, I, I would agree. I think the, the way that I tried to style it more traditionally, that's why I went for the, the rounder last shape as well. Uh, Fit-wise, I thought these were actually pretty good for me, but again, that's because I can lace them up so they hug the foot a little bit tighter. Yep. I haven't had any issues. Uh, as you say, the sole is fairly flexible on these as well. And yours is extremely thin. Yes. It's right. like, I mean, almost thinner than the Scarosso one. So that's yeah, pretty thin. I think so. Um, they are fairly comfortable to wear as well. I chose to add, which another one of their customizable options is that you can have insoles sent along with these. I've put them in. They are just, I think, kind of cheaper foam insoles. So for the time being, they're going to provide some additional comfort, but I would assume that eventually I'll have to swap those out for the insoles that I put into most of my other shoes anyway. Yeah, I hate insoles, so I never wear them <laughs> and I wouldn't put them in there. I mean, they, they send them. It's nice that you have that option, right? If you know you want that, you like that, cool. I don't care for them. Yeah, I think overall, for the price, you can find other shoes like Velasca who are maybe a little better in terms of the workmanship, but this shoe is really great if you want something very specific that you can't find from any other brand, right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't get my Black Oxfords from Undandy, right. but if I wanted something very specific that I couldn't get otherwise, and I didn't want to spend a ton of money on it, I think that's your best option. I think if they had maybe better lasts, that would be huge and maybe like options for a weld difference, maybe even a, a Goodyear option or, or maybe a Blake Rapid, but where you could see the weld, I think that would be nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe the option to get slightly stiffer leathers. I mean, then it would be killer. Yeah, I, I was ultimately fairly pleased with these. I, I like the look of them overall. They came out the way that I wanted them to at least, which was the main thing. I did actually swap out the laces in these for some Fort Belvedere laces, which of course you can find in our shop, nice. to uh, match the stitching color even more closely than the laces they themselves provided, which yeah. I think is interesting. Uh, which is nice because having that contrast stitching is, I think, nice because it adds that little something to mm -hmm. the shoe. And having those matching shoe laces is just okay. kind of rounds it out. Yep. So ultimately, I was fairly satisfied with these. I, I ranked them as high as a four out of five. But I agree, if you want something that is maybe in a bit of a different last style, that's, that's where they're kind of limited in their selection right now. So if they were to diversify that a bit more, that could maybe bring some ratings up in the future. Totally. Yeah. I would say in terms of, in terms of the quality, it's more like three, three and a quarter, three and a half. Having that customizing option gets them up there. Right. But ultimately, you know, a shoe where I don't like the last, right, and it doesn't fit me 100%, I'm not going to wear. Yep. And so even though I can customize it all day long, I'm just not going to wear it. Mm -hmm. And um, there's lots of other brands that offer all kinds of different shoes and colors and, and different things. So yeah, um, cool that you can offer that at that price point. I think that's really fantastic, but they just have some more way to go. And you know, the workmanship, attention to detail, I can see like here, there's a little bit cutting that hangs over it. I didn't cut it all the way. There's a little bit there, but at the end of the day, that's not a huge thing. You can just cut it up and it's that, but it, it all adds up, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of, yeah, lots of little paper cuts uh, can also 
mm -hmm. hurt you. Yeah, so I think in this way, maybe what we'd say ultimately with these is because there are so many different factors, your mileage may vary. <laughs> Thank you.